Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the game which I just promised you a couple of hours ago. Uh, we have again Jan Krzysztof Duda and Fabiano Caruana. Just a reminder what happened in the first uh, part of the match where we had the five minutes and one second incrementation. Uh, Fabiano Caruana started really great. He won first three games, so that was shocking. Uh, then we had the one lost and then he won another game. 4-1. This, this is how Fabiano Caruana Caruana started. Then Jan Krzysztof Duda played the beautiful game, very beautiful game with the uh, queen sacrifice at the end. If you haven't seen that game, check over there. I just posted that today. So th this game uh, definitely very, very beautiful. Um, and now I would like to show you the game, the last game. So uh, what happened after the, the five minutes uh, blitz section? It was, I think, six to five for Jan Krzysztof Duda. So he equalized uh, and even started to lead then we had the three minutes and one second incrementation and i think it ended three three so uh, at the end we have a nine to eight uh, for young Krzysztof duda and then bullet 30 minutes of bullet games uh, and we had uh, from what i remember nine games and this what happened is just incredible it, this this was just insane uh, everybody expected but this was just just insane so without further ado i will show you the score the final score and the standings all the quarter finalists um, and so on uh, but first i would like to show you the last game the last game uh, which didn't matter to the last score however it's quite symbolic because at the end of the game uh, we're gonna see the one of the most beautiful checkmates uh, of course both of the players played like uh, pretty much relaxed already uh, maybe not both of them relaxed however one one was more relaxed um, and yeah let's jump to the game uh, we have again uh, Fabiano Caruana started with e4 c5 so again we have the Sicilian defense knight f3 d6 this is how usually Jan Krzysztof Duda plays uh, d4 open variation uh, and after knight f3 six we had the knight c3 a6 again so um knight of uh, variation and now rook g1 so this time uh, fabiano caruana decided to play freak attack and now freak attack is extremely tricky opening i will just show you two lines which which will show you how complicated and complex and tricky is this opening. So, for example, a very natural uh, line is knight c6 uh, and then g4. And now after knight d4, queen d4, there is the question, can this pawn be taken? Actually, it's attacked twice, so it looks like it can be taken. And indeed, the knight can actually take uh, on g4. However, the tricky part is if the bishop takes. The point is that the rook, actually white can sacrifice the exchange and after a knight g4 there is the beautiful queen a4 so this knight actually cannot go and help on d7 and now if b5 then of course knight b5 and this is the problem uh, a takes on b5 bishop b5 and now uh white not gonna win the queen but rather deliver checkmate crazy insane line uh, queen d7 is slightly better but it's still losing because again bishop b5 and queen is lost or the exchange is lost uh, and then after queen d8 white gonna pick up the pawns and win the game uh, so for example g7 and then after queen b5 white gonna have uh, these two connected past pawns and of course a uh, completely one game so this is just uh, one of the lines after knight c6 uh, another uh, crazy crazy line even more crazy look at this b5 and now after g4 bishop b7 g5 and now this knight actually can win the pawn of course but this is a, a pretty nice trap knight e4 knight e4 bishop e4 and now queen g4 and the game is extremely tricky the bishop is under attack so bishop g b7 bishop g2 uh, and after exchanging the bishops now the rook is under attack and black has to be extremely precise now uh, in, in another moves incoming. So just for your information, rook a7 have to be played or d5. Other moves are just losing. So for example, uh, black plays a uh, very natural knight d7 and there is the problem very beautiful move by white. And if you watch my channel, you know already that move. Boom, 
G6 and G6 is completely uh, winning. Now, uh, whatever black do, it doesn't really matter. Uh, there is knight E6 and of course the knight cannot be taken because of the checkmate. Pretty insane, isn't it? Black have to find the move rook h2, try to deflect the queen. Uh, of course, the queen doesn't take the rook this, but rather this rook. And now black cannot take the queen because of this fork and that would be completely winning for, for white. Uh, the only way of playing is f takes on e6 but it's still losing. Simply queen a6 and now look at this pawn structure. Look at this bishop, this bishop. How would you develop this bishop? Uh, these two pawns or these two pawns have to be moved. This is completely insane. This pawn of course is lost as well and white have one extra um, exchange. So uh, th this is just this is just insane. Two lines of the of this um, freak attack and a very insane line. But Jan Krzysztof Duda is not interested in complications. This is the last uh, game and he wants to play what he knows. So he simply play e5. This variation of course is uh, uh, known as well. So we have knight b3, bishop e6 and, and now g4 as planned and Jan Krzysztof Duda immediately goes for d5. So we have e takes on d5 now, knight d5, so this pawn is not dangerous anymore. Uh, and now um, this is playable still after exchanging actually, uh, this is pretty much very very drawish. We have a lot of games in the database, bishop e3, knight c6 and after castle, castle, uh, we have I think 10 or, or, or 15 draws. So uh, this is well known, you know, drawish line. Uh, so Fabiano Caruana went for something else, bishop g2, uh, not the greatest. However, uh, he opens this diagonal now uh, and the knight is attacked three times. So first we have knight c3 with the attack on the queen uh, and now first queen d8, king d8, bishop takes on c3 uh, and now knight c6. Uh, we have bishop e3 developing, we have king c7 and now rook b1. So Fabiano Caruana has these ugly pawns, however he also has uh, the semi-open b file. Uh, we have rook c8 now. Um, and now bishop e4. Uh, we have also bishop e7, we have king e2 connecting the rooks and now b5 just uh, to create some very beautiful outpost on the, on the c4. So uh, if this knight is moved then of course the knight can jump over there, also the bishop potentially can come to c4 and so on. And here Fabiano actually could undermine this b5 pawn, for example playing something like a4 and so probably b takes on a4 and now knight c5 attacking the bishop, attacking another pawn, so probably black would have to sacrifice the, the pair of bishops uh, and this game could continue, white maybe slightly worse, however pair of bishops can be very very uh, powerful here. Uh, but we have g5 with the idea of advancing on the, on the queen side. So we have rook c2 d8, uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda wants to take control um, over the open d file, this is the only open file, we have h4 now and now bishop d5, want to uh, exchange the bishops and Fabiano Caruana said ok, but I'm gonna take with the king, so my king gonna control the center, so we have bishop e4, king e4, so the king is in the center but it's not the end game yet, so this position can be very very tricky and remember this is one minute game so um, also Fabiano Caruana has to be very very precise but for now for example if the knight is moved then this pawn for example is under attack so black also have to find some plan but the plan is very easy double the rooks first so we have rook d7 knight d2 now remaneuvering the knight rook h to d8 and now knight f3 so going after the pawn on the on the e5 uh, maybe exchange the, the knights uh, but now we have rook e8. So now taking the, the, the pawn isn't that great because of course we would have bishop d6. So this is why we have h5 now. So advancing with the pawns, trying to open some other file on the, on the queen side. And now we have knight a5. As the knight is no longer on b3, then why not to jump to the very beautiful outpost on the c4. Uh, we have a4 now attacking the, the pawn, knight c4. And now taking a takes on b5 isn't that great. Uh, because the problem is this knight d6 and the king has no uh, good squares to go actually. Uh, because after king d3 we're gonna have the fork here, so that would be completely losing. Uh, king d5 isn't that great because the rook is behind, so of course knight b5 with the check uh, and after let's say king e4 
knight c3 uh, winning the exchange so that's another idea and finally if the king takes actually on e5 then bishop g5 another discover check pretty crazy with the two rooks in the center uh, so let's say king d5 now we're gonna have another check uh, and yeah where you're gonna go if you move here then you're gonna uh, lose the exchange if you move to the to the c5 slightly better but still bishop e7 and after king c4 knight a3 uh you're gonna have rook b8 and exchanging all of these two rooks for the rook and the knight and this rook extra exchange of course gonna uh, pick up the pawn on h5 and win the game uh this passed pawn gonna win the game uh, pretty easily so uh there is no way actually to playing this is why we have knight h4 by Fabiano Caruana so he makes extra escaping square for this king he he just see that okay this is too risky in the center and also the knight can jump to the very nice f5 square we have b takes on a4 because now this is the pretty much threat to losing this these two pawns for the for the one pawn only so we have b takes on a4 uh, and now we have knight f5 as planned uh, and here bishop f5 was uh, pretty good already for for black black get a very nice advantage here very difficult uh, position for for white what white can play so for example uh bishops whatever move doesn't really matter because the knight jumping to the to the d2 so uh, the king can go for example to f3 or whatever okay let's say bishop c1 just to maybe block the the a3 but ag again this is fork so this is pretty much forced uh, doesn't matter what the move and now this pawn is under attack this pawn is under attack attack and uh, white can try to uh, defend that uh, but then king c3 this is pretty tricky still because the knight can jump to the to the d5 so first play king c6 and then after let's say rook g to f1 defending also this pawn uh, then we have bishop c5 uh, attacking the defender of the of the c2 so probably uh, rook a1 first uh, and after let's say a3 uh black also doesn't want to lose the pawn uh then rook a2 and the position of white is completely lost it's completely passive this rook is guarding the pawn this rook is guarding the pawn uh the knight can be eliminated in the right moment and black have a, a lot of freedom so in terms of freedom black has a completely winning game so this was possible bishop f8 was completely winning however uh we have g6 by jan krzysztof duda h takes on g6 h takes on g6 and here uh, actually a uh, knight e7 if fabiano caruana want to draw and uh, then just exchange the pieces knight e7 rook d2 e7 uh, and then let's say rook b4 forcing maybe exchange that would be completely draw or maybe uh move to d6 but then of course king f3 uh, a3 rook a4 this pawn is gonna be lost uh this pawn uh, also we don't see how it's gonna promote so um that actually would be uh, would be the draw as well so Fabiano Caruana had his chances however he prefers knight h6 so the knight are uh, gonna be maneuvered uh, this way Fabiano Caruana tries to find some some good squares uh, for the knight um, but now we have bishop a3 uh, we have also rook a1 attacking the bishop for now is defended so uh black have to be very very careful we have rook b8 getting the rooks to the to the open b file uh, and now knight g4 as planned as the bishop moved then why not to bring the 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 knight to them to the f6 it looks pretty good we have rook b2 going after the pawn on c2 uh, we have now knight f6 attacking the rook so rook d8 uh, and here actually fabiano caruana missed the another move uh, which could give him at least a draw bishop c1 actually wins the the exchange or the piece so for example uh rook c2 bishop a3 and as you see uh black gonna have let's say knight d5 with check and after king b7 uh, the position is uh, black has three pawns but these pawns are pretty much very ugly ugly pawns and uh, white has one extra piece so white stands pretty good here actually it's better for white so probably fabiano caruana would win that however he missed his opportunity of winning the piece uh, and he played rook h1 so his idea is actually uh to be very active win the pawn on f7 maybe then win the pawn on the on the g6 and try to win uh with this uh with this past pawn uh we have rook c2 of course we have rook h7 as planned uh, and now king c6 avoiding the check so rook f7 and now knight d6 
So who blunder? Jan Krzysztof Duda or Fabiano Caruana? I think none of them because now we have King D3 with the attack on the on the rook. So now if the if the rook is taken, then of course this rook is taken. And after exchanging a couple of pieces, that could be the dead draw. It's very difficult to imagine that one of the sides could could win that um, that game. Uh, so this is why we have rook B2 by Jan Krzysztof Duda. So he wants to keep more pieces on the board as the king is still uh, somewhere in the center. Rook H7 as the rook was under attack and now knight b5 another discovered check uh, and here if king e4 um, then this pawn is lost so knight c3 let's say king e5 uh, for exchanging for that but then rook b5 uh, king e6 and as you see this is a very very tricky position and um, black black have uh, definitely uh, quite some advantage here uh, we can we can imagine uh, you know uh, rook d6 king f7 another rook can jump here and uh, and it's pretty bad position so this is why we have king c4 keeping an eye on the on the pawn but the position is a very very tricky one rook b3 this is what Jan Krzysztof Duda played. There is the checkmate on c3, uh, so definitely has to be uh, somehow defended. The bishop cannot defend because the rook controls d2. That is the first thing. Uh, also, the, the rook cannot go to c1 because it's controlled by the bishop. So this is why we have knight e4. And now Jan Krzysztof Duda went for very beautiful move. Actually, you can pause the video and find um, the winning continuation. Uh, this 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 in this move uh, there is only one really winning continuation while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so the only winning move in this position is actually rook d5 quite silent but look at this rooks this rook creates the uh, defense around the king so king stays in the center and everything what black has to do now uh, is deliver a checkmate on d6 but first we have to somehow deflect the knight so this is the idea here if you found it congratulations uh in our game we have rook f7 uh, white can actually prolong the game with uh, actually giving away some material so for example rook c7 so we're not gonna show that uh of course it's losing uh rook f7 was played by fabiano caruana and now everything is forced checkmate in two moves boom rook c3 and there is only one move uh, and the knight gonna be deflected so if you found it congratulations knight c3 and now watch at this boom and this is the checkmate because the pawn controls b3 uh the bishop controls also this square uh and the rook controls uh, rest of the squares around so this is beautiful checkmate so this is how ended and i would like to show you the the score so here we go uh jan krzysztof duda won 17 to 9. so what happened in the bullet he won 8 to 1. he won 8 to 1. this this was just incredible this was crushing uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda outplayed in almost every game uh, Fabiano Caruana. Fabiano Caruana was just too slow for Jan Krzysztof Duda. This was uh, one minute, one second incrementation. So we already know the seventh uh, quarter finalist Jan Krzysztof Duda gonna play uh, in the quarter final against Wesley So and we are still waiting for another match where Vladislav Artemiev gonna play against Anish Giri. So if you don't want to miss um, the games, the matches and the report from the a speed chess championship press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one